Hey, what's going on guys, it's Matt. And today we're gonna walk through a cheap and easy way to uh, do low oxygen transfers from your plastic fermenter into your keg. Um, there's lots of very expensive ways to do it with fancy stainless steel conical fermenters, but I do not have any of that equipment. I just have a plastic uh, fermenter. You can, you can do this with bucket fermenters, or I have the Big Mouth Bubbler from Northern Brewer, but really any fermenter with a plastic spigot, you can do this with. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started and I'll show you the materials you'll need. Okay, so this is pretty much all you'll need. You'll need a liquid out for a keg. You'll need some sort of way to secure the line to that liquid out. And then you'll need some sort of tubing that will hook up to the liquid out. The other side will go into the plastic spigot that you have on the bottom of your keg or your fermenter. It could be a, a bucket or whatever you're using to ferment with. Uh, the, for the for the black um, connection for the corning keg, you want to make sure that it's a screw fitting, not a barbed fitting. The screw fitting is a little bit thicker, so it will fit uh, inside the tubing a lot uh, snug, a lot more snug. So you want to make sure you get this one and not the barbed one. The only other thing you might need is is just a um, a gas in for the corning keg, and you don't need this. Uh, this is totally optional, but if you have this, this will make the process a little bit uh, easier for you, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So the first thing you do, like always, is you'd want to ensure that everything is sanitized. So we are going ahead and putting some star sand in the keg, and I'm gonna fill it to around three gallons to start sanitizing the keg. So after everything's been sanitized, there's one of two ways you can fill up the, uh, the keg with CO2. The first way, um, is to keep the sanitizer in the keg, seal it up, hook up the liquid uh, out, well, that will be the liquid in when we're transferring, but the liquid out connector with the tube we talked about a little bit ago, and then just push all of the sanitizer out into, the, into a bucket or something like that, anything really. That will ensure that the sanitizer is out and then the keg is full of CO2. The other thing you can do is just to uh, just open it up, empty empty the uh, star sand out like you typically would, and then just fill this with CO2 and then just burp the keg probably for 30, 30 seconds to a minute. That will also ensure that this is full of CO2 as well. So we're going to go ahead and just start pushing the sanitizer out of the keg, like the option when I was talking about, and then we can start emptying the star sand out and filling the keg up with CO2. We just hooked up the CO2. And as you can see, liquid is coming out of the tube. So this is really doing two things. One, this is sanitizing the line that we're gonna be using to rack over and sanitizing the liquid in out. Um, and then also filling the keg up with CO2. So we're gonna let this run and drain out. Before we move on to the next step, we now have a keg full of pressurized CO2 uh, that we use to push out the star sand with. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna wanna remove a lot of the pressure, but not all of it. We wanna keep probably at least a pound of pressure in the CO2. So you can go ahead and release the, uh, pull the pressure release valve for a decent amount of time. But like I said, you wanna still leave about a pound or two pounds of pressure in there for the next step. Okay, so next we're gonna start to demonstrate the transfer from the fermenter into the keg. I don't have beer in the fermenter, I just have some water, but the process is all the same. Um, so we needed to leave some pressure in the keg, so when we hook up the gas line, it's going to release the CO2 through the line and out through the spigot. Most plastic spigots have this little hole here, and if you didn't know what that was for, is so when you um, close the off, it allows oxygen to get in to the tube to let the rest of the liquid beer wort flow into the keg. We're going to actually use this hole to purge the tube with CO2 as well because as we plug this in naturally there'll be some oxygen in this. One other thing I forgot to mention, uh, there's another modification you can make to this to make sure that the process runs smoothly that I don't currently have that I might add in the future. Uh, you can actually add a filter to this line, so you can cut this uh, somewhere in the middle, add the filter, and then hook up the two lines to the filter. The reason why you'd want to do that is so when the wort or, or beer is flowing from the fermenter into the keg, if there's any sediment or big hop debris that's in the fermenter, uh, that 
gets uh, that gets sucked through the spigot, um, it could cause issues with clogging the uh, the line that we're using to push the beer into the keg. Once that's clogged with any hop debris or any major sediments, obviously the process is not going to work and you're going to have to just transfer the beer from the fermenter into the keg like you normally would. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, one way to avoid that is of course buying a filter for the lime or another way to, um, to avoid that is to when you're transferring the wort over to the fermenter in the first place after brew day to make sure that you're uh, filtering the hop debris out with a um, some sort of a um, mesh filter. Um, if you're dry hopping after uh, brew day, obviously that's another concern with hop debris. Uh, if you uh, use some sort of hop spider or um, some sort of container or bag that you put the hops in and throw it in the fermenter, that's another way to make sure that the hop debris uh, stays uh, in a bag or away from the spigot when you are racking the beer over. So when we hook this up and we push it down, the excess pressure from the keg should push the rest of the CO2 up the line and through this little hole here in the spigot to make sure that this only has CO2 in it. It may have been hard to hear, but when I plugged this in, it pushed the CO2 out through the tube and out this hole. So now this should have mostly CO2 in it. If not all, the oxygen should be purged out of that. Um, so the last thing we gotta do is just turn the spigot on, allowing the wort beer flow into the liquid out. So, and the, the dip tube goes all the way to the bottom. So as you're filling this up, it's gonna start filling this up from the bottom up pushing the CO2 out of the keg. So you might be asking yourself, how do you push, how do you make sure that the CO2 can escape the keg? Well, there's two ways. One, you can just keep pulling this valve uh, to release the excess pressure, which is kind of annoying, but you can do without any extra parts. The other thing you can do is like I mentioned in the first few clips is you can just buy one of these and just plug it in. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna just leave a vent open. So as this fills up with beer, the CO2 can escape through this valve here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have um, some sort of vent on the top of the fermenter. Uh, you can just pull the uh, airlock off the top of the bung, uh, which should supply enough air to the fermenter to allow the liquid to flow into the keg. If you do not vent the uh, fermenter, what's gonna happen is there's gonna be at some point too much pressure buildup on the top of the fermenter where it will stop the flow of beer into the keg. So we can go ahead and open this up and let this go. And you're gonna start to hear the beer start to fill up, or in this case, the water, start to fill up the keg and we can let this drain. One thing that I wanna to mention too, is while this is filling up and as this gets lower and lower, you wanna make sure that this doesn't suck any air into this line. So as this fills up or as this lowers, you wanna start tilting the fermenter. So you make sure that there's no air that gets in there. Um, if the liquid line drops below the spigot, what's gonna happen, it's gonna suck air from the fermenter into the keg. Once all the beer is in the keg, you can simply just disconnect it like you normally would. You would turn the spigot off. You would just unplug the gas line and then unplug the liquid line. And this thing should now be full of beer and CO2. You can go ahead and take this and throw it in your kegerator or your teaser and pressurize it like you normally would to start carbonating. But that about covers it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. Make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel for more helpful tips and brew days. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks guys.